All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, we got a different kind of interview for you today, but it's going to be a great one. We have an inspiring author uh, that I, I really think that his work is going to reach, you know, the New York Times best-selling author one day. But right here, right now, we yeah. got Antar Youssef on the line. How are you doing this evening? Hey, brother. How you doing, man? It's an honor to be here. Hey, man, I got to say it's an honor to have you on, man. You know, we, we've been connected on Facebook for a while, and... You know, I've been reading some of your posts, man. You got I gotta say you are such a you are such a gifted writer, man. Like you you, you deserve all the praise that comes your way. Thank you, bro. Um, you know, I I've been given a little um the arrogant label, you know, when I talk about my writing, you know. I have to do something well, right? And that's what I choose to do well. And I think I'm the best, man. Seriously, you know, if somebody asks me, Well, how do you describe yourself as a writer? I feel like I'm like a Michael Jordan in the projects in the alley that nobody sees yet. You understand me? Even though I do have a book out now um, called Did I Stutter, which is you know, doing well. I'm very proud of it. Um, but it's my only nonfiction book. I'm a fiction writer primarily, horror and erotica, and any genre you want. It doesn't matter. You know, I'm not pigeonholed anywhere. And I really do think I'm the best, bro, seriously. And I'm great grassroots, you know. I don't market myself. That's why I feel pretty honored to be here, man. Because I'm not marketing myself. It's not really my personality. I'm from a friend of mine, Thomas Perhogan. And I know you know him because that's your friend. And so he um, he called me one day and told me about your show and told me who you were. And said I needed to be on there, get some exposure. And I said, all right, man, no problem. You know, because I'm a universe. See, I believe the universe is going to take care of whatever it's going to take care of for me. You know what I mean? Whatever's for me is going to be, bro. You know? And I'm trying to get rich to help anybody I can. You know what I mean? That's my main motivation for everything in my life is to give, give, give. You know, we're all one in this world. And now uh, we look in the mirror, you know, I see myself, but I know all the universe is behind me, you know? And no black or white, I don't care what color. It doesn't matter, man. You know, we're all one. And my writing portrays that, especially in my first book that I stutter. It's all about thoughts of things and creating your reality and being the best you can through a positive vibration. You know what I mean? So if you think positive thoughts, you'll get positive thoughts, and vice versa, you know? So that's what I'm all about. And I plan to make movies eventually. I plan to um, turn my books into movies, like Stephen King, my hero, you know, who's co-signed me himself. You know, I used to email him about three years straight every day, and I wasn't getting any response. And one day he um, emailed me back, wrote me a letter, you know, and... <laughs> I was blown away. You know, at that point, I really felt official. And, you know, not that I need a validation, because I really think, you know, I'm like the Wu-Tang of this, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I say the Wu-Tang, I mean, I'm versatile. And I got to ask you, pertaining to, like, Stephen King, man, what actually, like, made you, what made you decide to actually reach out to Stephen King? Like, you know what I mean? Like, because I know some authors, they kind of do their own thing. But what what actually really made you want to start writing letters to Stephen? Uh, His movies. Um, you know, the little kids watching The Shining, Carrie, um, uh, Cujo, um, you name it, you know, Keep Show 1 and 2. Um, yeah, it just is like, wow, this dude is awesome, incredible, pouring those books out like he does. You know, it seems like he writes a book every two weeks, man. You know what I mean? Like, 1,500 word books, you know? Have you ever had the opportunity to check out his uh, book called 112263? It's about a thousand page book, man, but I gotta say it's not one of his like scary horror books, but I read that from front to cover and I have to say it is a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece and he's detailed. You know, his detail is incredible. And I'm not gonna say I I mirror myself, you know, um, after him, but I really think, you know, I'm on that level, bro. He's twenty five years older than me and I think, you know, shoot, he gave all these verses on Instagram. I would love to do a versus on Insta- uh, with Stephen King. You know? <laughs> and this is probably laughing like, yeah, okay. You know, trust me. You go to my Facebook page, I post all my excerpts. You know, I've written a book called Come Up and it's 100,000 words. I was on the shelf because it's just so much work, man. And I need to write editors that, you know, to take care of it. So that's coming out soon. And I also have a book called The Dream. It's like a um, smorgasbord of just... It's imaginative. I can't explain. You just got to check it out for yourself, man. It's called The Dream. And my current book is called Kill Fest. Oh, that's my baby right now, man. Trust me. And from beginning to end, once you read it and you're engulfed, 
and you'll feel like you're in the movie itself before you even come out. So check me out, man. Facebook, um, I'm Anshar Youssef. You know, I got to do is scroll down my page and see why I think I'm the best. Speaks for yourself. And one last thing I have to ask pertaining to the Stephen King God topic, man. Like, when you actually receive that letter, because I know you probably don't want to re- reveal everything that was said, because, you know, you want to keep some things for yourself, but w- w- what was the, some of the stuff that he actually said to you during that letter, man? Because that's actually huge. I'm a huge Stephen King fan myself, so I'm really intrigued. Well, well I posted on my page. It's on my page, so I have to find it. Gonna, you'll see it on my page. It's been, like, a three years now. He just basically told me, man, I'm a badass, and, um, you know, once you accomplish something like a dream, you set your your mind and soul on your accomplishment, you're a badass, man, because not many people can do that. You know, a lot of people start something and they stop. I mean, they just don't have to get the wherewithal to keep it going. So he was giving me my props for that. He told me to keep on going, and um, he was impressed by me. And, you know, I got to the point, I was bragging so much, man. Like, I would post a picture of him, you know, he sent me a picture. And I was posting a letter on Facebook like every day, man. You know, and I would apply my excerpts to them. So I would have his letter or whatever, and him talk to me, and I would apply my um, yeah, sixty thousand word excerpt on Facebook, man, freestyle. You know, I, I freestyle novels, bro. You know what I mean? You know, everybody tells me I should ghostwrite for people, and I could ghostwrite for anybody alive, even Jay Z. Now I've been told this, man. You know what I'm saying? By people who. Aren't casual readers, you know, they read novels, they read books, they're teachers and professors, you know, at Temple University and um, University of Penn. You understand? My brother in law is a chief of orthopedic surgery at Penn, and I got my book, I got my first book, um, I'm not going to say critiqued, you know, but I did want the opinion of the chairman, you know, of University of Penn. He was blown away, man. You know, so I'm not saying the best, you know, I could show it, I could prove it. And it is what it is, you know. I really wish I was a rapper. You know how rappers, they battle, you know, they claim they're the best. That's the way I feel. I wish I could just battle like a writer, like writers, like authors. You know, like novel, like novelists. It looks like a battle. I'm just battle. Like paragraph to paragraph, stanza to stanza. Whatever you want to do, I'll win. And that's the way I feel. So, you know, it's not about me having a bestseller or being in New York Times. You know, I write because I love it. You know what I mean? So whatever's going to transpire is going to transpire, man, regardless of, you know, money and monetary stuff, you know? I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing, and advancing the universe is going to give me all the money I need so I can help anybody who needs it. And that's my main motivation everything I do, man. So, and I think that spurs my talent, too, because it's, it's basically my karma, man. I have good karma. You know, I'm a good person, and it translates through my writing. And I talk about it, I brag about it, and I feel like I'm like an MAA fighter with this, man. Wu-Tang, just whatever you want to call me, man. I'll back it up. So, you know, like I said, this is my first radio interview. This is my first interview um, anywhere, period. Hey, man, we know what, uh, you know, like, like the old saying goes, it's the first, <laughs> but it most definitely ain't the last, man. And when you actually brought up a few moments ago about university, I also wanted to shed some light on this, man, because I noticed when I was doing, when we were doing the research for the interview, that, you know, you actually graduated this year uh, from Lincoln University, yeah. man. I just got to give you your flowers, man, and say congratulations, man, because, you know, uh, me personally, I barely got past high school. Like, I got my diploma, but, you know, university is huge, bro, so congratulations on that. Oh, uh, thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Yeah, 3.8, man, you know, human services. I'm a um, counselor. You know, I love the kids, man. I like to help their mind grow, you know, because they're important. You know, they're the foundation. And, um... Mm, that's first and foremost, man, everything I do. You know, everything I sell to my books, 20% always goes to autism. And autism speaks. And it's very important. My nephew has autism. My nephew, Jace, he's awesome. He's brilliant. And I'm a full support of him and autism. So, you know, if you happen to buy my book, I promise, you know, the money is going to, uh, 20% of that money is going to autism. Always. And I, I like that as well, because on the back of your book, it actually says that you actually, uh, you want to find a, you want a cure for autism. That That is the dream. And you know what I mean? I have to say, yeah. I, I agree with that as well, man. Like, autism, there really should be a cure for that. Like, uh, hopefully, in our lifetime, we actually have the opportunity to be able to see that. Yeah, and you know, it's funny even using the word cure, you know, like, I think you feel a little funny, because the autism, you know, the uniqueness of it. And the pure individualism of autism is awesome, man. You know, I guess they're a little different from uh, from us or many other people, but they're so just so incredible, man. You know, and the unique gifts that they apply to autism is just 
it's very, it's very, like, it's very inspiring, you know, the things that they can accomplish in spite of that label that they have. You understand? So, um, yeah, man, everything I do is geared towards positivity and upliftment, and I don't have any time for any negativity, bro. Like, seriously, like, any mean spirit in this, and I just don't understand the concept of, like, let me get like, war. Like, how do you... Can't have a war and think you can stop another war. Like, how do you think you can stop war with war? It doesn't make any sense. And you can't stop negativity with negativity, man. It's backwards, you know. And that's my whole consciousness. You understand me? Because you know, creating we is what we think. So if you're thinking negatively, that's what we're getting. That's why the that's why the world is like it is now, bro. You know, look at the president. You know I mean, you know, yeah, I know you're in Canada, but look at our president. You know, like who votes for somebody like that, bro? Like, shit, so mean spirit and evil and that. Like, what makes you vote for him? You know, and think that the world's going to be good, the world's going to be a better place. And I just can't, I can't comprehend it, you know? And <laughs> it's just very perplexing to me. You know, following people and everybody, you know, conglomerate of negativity. And nobody seems to understand. Like, what makes me so different? Why am I saying something so different than you? You know what I mean? Like, something so negative and interpreting that as being negative, and you don't see it. You know, and then I have my friends who don't see it. Like, how are we friends? You know, it just doesn't correlate, man. So, um, you know, I say that as a say, you know, I, I, that's why I write. You know, I, mean, I can't always verbalize the way I feel. You understand me? And I write more than fiction. I write soliloquies. I write affirmations. I write, you know, whatever commentary, whatever you want, man. You know, I told my friend the other day on Facebook, if you want me to write a love letter to your loved ones or to your wife, you know, and sign your name, boom, I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll do it because that's what I do. You know, I want to help people, man. Seriously, and that's my superpower, dude, writing, man. It's, it's my superpower, okay? And anybody listening, like, wow, who is this dude? Go to my page and see for yourself. You know, I write 50,000 words excerpts, and I write 5,000 words a day, bro, every day. I own a cell phone, okay? I've never used a computer. I've never written one word for any of my books, any of my future books on a computer, ever. And I have one. You know, I use a Samsung Galaxy. And I've been told, my mom tells me, and all my friends tell me, I need to be in the Guinness Book of World Records, okay? Straight up. Because nobody writes all this on their phone, man. 500,000 words of work on a phone, you know what I mean? And I can, shoot, I could call Verizon, get Verizon, NT Mobile, all the records, and prove it. I'm gonna be honest though, man. It's a lot nowadays. It's a lot easier to text because you're so used to just using your thumbs, right? Nowadays, not a lot of people really use a keyboard. So my personal opinion, yeah. I can type a hell of a lot quicker on a cell phone versus a versus a computer keyboard. Right, right, exactly. So, but the thing is, though, I've never used a computer though, dude, ever. Not one time to write any word or any book I've written, never. So and that's the truth. So I think that says a lot, man, because I'm. I'm resilient, you know what I'm saying, and I don't tire, you know, so, and I think I'm a prodigy, man, straight up. And also, yeah. man, I have to ask you as well, like, as we already know, we actually met through our friend Thomas, our mutual friend, I have to ask you, how did yourself and Thomas actually meet, like, how did you guys get connected? Oh, so, wow, okay, well, I'm a big proponent of the law of attraction, you know, thoughts of things, and Esther Hicks, I don't know if you know who Esther Hicks is. Um, she's a writer, like, um, she goes by the name of Abraham, too. She's written the books, asking if it can be, excuse me, asking if it's given on the law of attraction, et cetera. And that's my teacher. You know, I've been, just, I've been following her for about, you know, I guess, 15 years. Matter of fact, she was, um, uh, uh, what's the name of the teacher? Um, oh, I'm going to draw a blank. Oh, anyway, okay. I was following her for about 15 years now, 20 years, going on 20 years now. And we know her books and listen to her YouTube um, videos. And so I was, I was posting that stuff on Facebook, like some of her excerpts and everything. And um, on time, so I followed him. I accepted his friendship. And he just told me, he just started inboxing me. I'm like, wow, man, you're so inspiring. Like, the things you talk about, you know, you're changing my life. Um, you know, I don't know, anything like, you know, like, man, He's some older than him too, so you know, I guess I kind of I'm kinda of inspiring him. But older than him, the things I talk about, you don't see too much on Facebook, man. I mean, especially from a man. 
kind of a black man. You understand me? And you don't see that. You know, you don't see you don't see black men talking about law of attraction and um and astral projection, like leaving your body. You know what I mean? Stuff like meditation. You know, and I'm not trying to make it virtual none, but let's keep it a hundred. I don't see it. I don't see it. my friends are black. I don't see them doing it. So, you know, I mean, I guess it's like, wow, I was different to them, I guess. I mean, I don't blame them. I mean, so it connected like there. It connected like that. And um, I finally met Esther Hicks. I had to visualize meeting her for eight years straight, dude. I was visualized meeting her for eight years. And it happened exactly where I visualized it. April 9th, 2016, in Washington, D.C. Thousands of people there, man. And I was one of the five people she called. And I hugged her on stage and kissed her on the cheek. And I visualized that happening there for eight years. I can't make this stuff up. You know, call me up there. That's probably the happiest day of my life. You know, because it validated all my beliefs, man. And, like, you know, there's no death. You know, it's all energy. And your energy can't be destroyed. So, 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 you know, when we die, we just, you know, we transcend. You know what I mean? I believe that we chose, we chose its existence. I chose all these experiences that I had. And it's not just randomness. And I chose it. You know what I mean? So when she called me up there and I hugged her and kissed her, I was just so blown away that, you know, all my thoughts have transpired to my reality, man. And this is what she taught me. You know what I mean? So I actually accomplished what she taught me. You know what I mean? So... And that's how many times I connected. You know, same ideologies, I guess. You know, he's a really good dude, man. He's a beautiful daughter. You know, he's a beautiful wife. And I look up to him, too. You know what I mean? Because I've never met a dude. I've never met him in person. You know what I mean? But that's what I'm saying. And there's no coincidence, no accidents. You know, it was meant, it was meant to come in touch with him. Shoot, now I won't be on here with you. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. Hey, man, stuff, everything in life happens for a reason, man. You know what I mean? I'm going to be honest. A lot of them, uh, I'm gonna be honest. The majority of people that I actually met are, are over the internet, man. And people, so people on the internet support me more than individuals I actually broke bread with in real life. So you know what I mean? Hell the yeah. internet's a damn thing. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It's vibration, bro. You know what I'm saying it's vibration. You know, I can read it. You know, you connect with you know, birds of a feather flock together. You know, and I'm all about positivity. I mean, I'm 48 years old, dude. I'm from stuff in West Philly. I'm saying I survived murder attempts and all that. I guess my vibration wasn't right back then or something. I don't know. I'm, I'm still here. I'm from the hood of all hoods. You know what I mean? Been there, done that. So, you know, there's nothing you can tell me. You know, I've been there, done that. And also, I'm man, I, I, as you huh? mentioned earlier, your newest book, you know, uh, was published in 2017. I, I could uh, titled Did I Stutter? A Creative Writing Expos. I have to ask you. Where can our listeners actually snag themselves a copy of that book? And of course, like, um, like, is it hard copy or can they get like soft covers? Like, what, like, what kind of book is it? Oh uh, yeah, it's a book of like um, spiritual affirmations and silly, not like it's a book of spiritual affirmations, soliloquies, um, just my personal, my personal, you know, revelations. Um, yeah, it's everywhere. It's on BarnesandNobles dot com. Um, I'm just Google, put my name in, put in. I'm going to answer our use it's going to pop up. You know, did I start, the only did I start a book is going to pop up. I guarantee it. The only thing I did I start a book is going to pop up. Okay, my books are first. Mm-hmm. Then the other ones come after it. So, yeah, did I stutter? So, you need the only thing that will come up, maybe did I stutter, is the Seinfeld episode. Did I, no, not the Seinfeld episode, the Office episode, did I stutter. Okay, it's me and them. I mean, some other, you know, did I start a book. But the reason I named it did I stutter is because I used to stutter. <laughs> so and I don't stare anymore. I still stand here and there because I'm very excitable. So I have a lot of empathy for people who stutter. And I would like to say that, you know, you will overcome it if you try just like anything else. You know, you just have to calm down and breathe and try to think a little slower and everything will fall into place. You know? So much love to the stutterers out there. And Joe Biden's a stutterer. A former stutterer. So I'm mean, much props. And he's a Scorpio like me. I'm mean, much props to all the Scorpios out there. And speaking of What's did I stutter, man? I also noticed that like, I don't I don't know if you have any 2020 ones, but I also noticed as well that you actually have calendars uh, based on your book. I was wondering how can our listeners actually snag themselves a copy of of that calendar? I know they're probably outdated by now, but uh, if they want to just get a little keepsake, you know, uh, how would they go about getting one of them calendars? 
I mean, they can email me at lindsayantar at gmail.com if they want one, but they're all gone, man. I sold them all. Um, thankfully, thank God for that. Um, I did really well. I had a couple of fish fries, and um, I gave the money to autism, and yeah, man, it's all good. You know, but this COVID, this COVID shit, man, it's just, you know, it's in the way, bro. You know, it's really, it's really depressing. You know, I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm a very positive person. I'm high spirited and I'm happy 90% of the time. You know, I can't front, bro. You know, I mean, this past couple of weeks, you know, this 2% was kicking my ass, man. You know, I've lost a lot of people. You know, people are sick. Um, you know, a friend of mine died just out of the blue. You know, I didn't know he was sick. And this is just, you know, it, it just compounded. You know what I'm saying? With the COVID and the mask and it just, you can't go out to eat. Don't do shit. So... I say that to say, you know, I'm just going to keep on writing, man, and trying to keep my mind, you know, it's grounded. You know what I'm saying? Because when this COVID shit is over, you know, I'm on HBO and Netflix, and all my shit is popping. I'm like, wow, that's what COVID did for you? You know, and I honor all my friends who are sick, and all my loss, all my loved ones I've lost, you know what I'm saying? All for them. You know? So I'd like to give an RIP to my cousin Pitt. You know, he died in 2015. But tragically, you know, I miss him. You know, the spirit is around me all the time. You know, I do what I do straight up in the name of him all day. I'm on Westfield forever, on Westfield. So, yeah, bro, thank you for asking me that. Hey, man, you are most certainly welcome. I want to say quickly as well, my sincere condolences, man. Like, as we already know, we're, we've been connected on Facebook for close to two years now, man. And, and I have to say, like, you know, I, I, saw, I saw the post, man, and, and I couldn't imagine going through all that loss, man. So I want to say just from everybody here at 97.7 at Law Radio FM, we send our sincere condolences to yourself and the family, bro. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, say, I appreciate that. But you know, man, I like to say, man, you know, it's life, bro. It's life. As much as I miss him, as much as I, you know, I'm in pain occasionally for missing you know, other loved ones, man, I realize it's life. He's born for this, man. You know, he's born for this. You understand know me? So I'm going to be happy. I'm going to live till I'm not here anymore. And it is what it is, man. So I don't really look at, like, gloom and doom. You know, we born for it. Of course, it's sad. You know what I mean? But they're happy. You know, I know they're happy. You know what I mean? So we're the ones that feel a little bad, but they're happy. So, you know, when I really contemplate on that, boom, I'm good. You know? And it just motivates me to be a better person and keep on doing what I'm doing, man. You know what I'm saying? Nothing will really hurt me. I'm invincible, man. I got God in me, seriously. See, I mean, I've everything in me, dude. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing, you can't do nothing to me. You understand know me? Because I practice what I preach. I really live this. You know, there's no facades over here. You understand know me? You go on my Facebook page, like, wow, you this and that. This is really me. You know, I know a lot of people. So it's not like, you know, I'm just in the shadows. Like, people know me. Seriously, I went to two HBCUs. Right? I went to Hampton and Lincoln. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, I just, come on, man. Everybody know me. Like, in Philly. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's not like I'm fun. It's just all 100. You know? And all I want is the people to be happy and to be healthy and to be peaceful and just be all good, man. Outside of that, you know, it really doesn't matter, man. Sure, I mean it. And I can't, I can't express that any more fervent than that. You know, it's so simple to me. Just be a good person. What's so hard? You understand? If you want somebody to treat you like a piece of shit, now, so why would you treat somebody like that? And I always say, like, if I've had, I don't get headaches, but if I had a really bad headache, I've had had them. And they're extreme. I don't know how people deal with them, you know, that you constantly have them. I'm saying, so why would I want you to have a headache, Brandon? <laughs> Seriously, like, why would I want you to have what I don't want? You know, you I just can't, I can't understand that. You know, and that's why I equate with people just, you know, treating people like shit. Now, you're going to get treated like shit, too. It's coming right back to you, boomerang style, bro. Boomerang style. I could talk to you for hours off. <laughs> off the radio about I'll just blow your mind, man, to the experiences, you know what I'm saying, I've had. You know, they've made me this way. They've shaped my soul. You know, I'm, pr- I'm proud of who I am, dude. I'm proud, you know what I'm saying? And if I can look in the mirror and just know that, you know, I'm living up to my potential. You understand me? And all these experiences have brought me to where I am now. I can't have this without that. I can't have that without this. It all goes hand in hand, man. You know, I can't look at I can't look at any contract, any contract negatively. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, why is this happening? Well, without that, it won't be this. 
You know what I'm saying? I can't appreciate pain without pleasure. I can't appreciate pleasure without pain. You know what I'm saying? It's all goes hand in hand, man. That's how I live my life. You know, that's how I leave this earth. You know, thank God both my parents are still alive. And I honor them. And I honor all my friends, man. And I honor God in me. I'm not a Bible babbler. I'm not like a church-going type person. I went to Catholic school K to 12. You know, I know about the Bible. And I've read it twice, you know, from the beginning to end. You know what I mean? But I'm not really into that, dude. You know what I mean? Fuck words. You know what I'm saying? As far as in regard to telling me who you are. I'm saying how you treat me is how I treat you and it's how I look at you. That's it. I don't care about you going to church. I don't care about you reading gospels and verses to me. I don't care about none of that, man. People are in the pudding. You understand? Know you could be an atheist. You know what I'm saying? And still be a great person. I love you for you because you treat people like you want to be treated. It's so all that. I believe in this and I believe in that. That's irrelevant. I mean, who really gonna put in with how you act and what you are in reality? So, but that's where I stand, man, and that's my um, that's my soapbox. That's all I talk about. That's where I feel, and I'm redundant with it because I'm creating my reality. You know what I'm saying? My momentum is sustained, you know, through my words and through my talking. You know, and I see it. My life is great, straight up. You know, as much as I've went through, I'm never, I'm never like. See, I never stay down, dude. You know, I win. Straight up. And the one thing I have to ask you as well, man, like, so this is the time of the interview there, you set, but I give a chance for the individual that slides into the radio station airwaves. Just a chance to give shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to. And, of course, man, your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and stay updated on all your newest books if they're not already doing so. Okay, okay. okay. Well, I guess I'll start out by saying look out for um, these books. Uh, I got killed. When I say books, I mean, most of my books, I want to be, I want to create a movie. That's what I want. That's my dream. Movies, 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 okay? So I, I plan to turn my books and my writings into movies. That's what I plan to do. Netflix, HBO, everywhere. Now, all I need is somebody, I need a team, man. It's just me. You know, I feel so overwhelmed sometimes because I'm so good at this. There's nobody to bounce off. And I'm saying, there's nobody, yo, help me with this, help me with that. It's just me, me, me. And everybody call me every day talking about, how great I am and how, oh, you're so great. Why don't you do that? Why don't you do that? Yo, dude, I have no help. You know what I mean? It's expensive. You know what I mean? Good stuff costs money, okay? She I play ball like I write, please, man. Somebody's supporting me and everything I do. He's writing checks for me, dude. Seriously, we could benefit later on. And that's what I feel. Like, I'm such a good writer. She, I feel like somebody should have my back, dude. And like, yo, let's go. Now, I'll put this up. You just do what you do. And we'll both be famous. We'll both be rich. Period. That ain't nothing to talk about. The stand up a kill fest is coming. Okay, I got come up with. I have the dream. I have Cindy and Mindy. I have Lusty. I have Orgasma. I have Hood Work. I have Peace Pill. Um, I have the Dentist. And I just go on and on and on. These short stories, man. I mean, you read them, they blow your mind. And they'll eventually be a series of movies or TV shows. So that's where I'm at with it. And I'm on Facebook, like I said, Anti Yusuf on Facebook, Anti Yusuf on Instagram. Um, my first book is Good I Stutter, is everywhere, and BarnesandNobles.com. I'm wherever. On eBay, Amazon, wherever. Um, I'm coming out with a, um, a greeting card line soon. You know, I was in touch with Hallmark, whatever. But like I said, I have so much other stuff going on. That's on the back burner. I can't do everything by myself. You know what I'm saying? If I had maybe two people helping me, boom, I'd be good. And I don't have an agent. And that's the thing. I'm about to get an agent. But if I had an agent, please. Yeah, I'll be on HBO right now today. Like a fact. And because, you know, everybody else gets blown away with my writing, why won't an agent be? I mean, so they're going to be blown away too. So it's all a matter of time, man. And I'm ultra confident, as you can see, because I do this. This is what I do. I get off the phone with you. I start writing more words, and I'll get to 5,000 before I go to sleep every single night. Who does that in the world, man? I'm sure somebody does. You know what I mean? But just, I don't know, they need to show themselves to me. I want to know who else does it. See, I want to know who else I'll post all their stuff on Facebook, man. Just excerpts, man. Get 5,000 more excerpts on Facebook, man. There's with the pictures drawn on the, connected to the um, excerpts. Who does it? You can show me. If you do, because I don't. Seriously, I've been on Facebook for 11 years. I've never seen it. Anywhere. I've been kicked out of every writing group. They tell me I write too much. You ever heard of anything like that? 
It's just complete nonsense, man. See, I'm in a writing group, and you throw me out because I'm the only one writing. Now, but you invited me to the writing group for writers. Now, like, yo, just ask for that shit, man. I can't even make up. You see, you know, I'm just getting to the interview, so I'm trying to get wrapped up. You know, my momentum, I'm feeling it. You know what I mean? And it's like, seriously, man, it's just ridiculousness. You know, I've been kicked out of every group on Facebook, man. Dude, I've been in, I've been in six writing groups on Facebook. They kicked me out of all of them. They told me, you're writing too much. You're dominating. Like, what? You know, what are you talking about? Seriously, man. That's like somebody saying, I don't know, um, I grow weed. You know what I mean? So are you hiring me to help you grow weed and shit? But in my section of the place, I'm growing too much weed. There's too much weed and shit, so you fire me. Um, but you're in there making weed to make money. But you fire me and shit because I'm making too much weed to make you money. It just doesn't make any sense, dude. This is what I go through every day. <laughs> yeah, I, I post these excerpts. You know, I have all these friends on Facebook, and it's cool. I love them. And how do you post all these ingenious excerpts and nobody says nothing? You know, are they too long? Or are they too, like, intricate? I don't understand. You know, because when I read a book, I'm like, wow, that was awesome. And I've read many books. I've read The Color Purple four times. And I know, like, this, oh, come on, man. You know what I'm You read Kill Fast. You, like, you read from the beginning. You read my work from the beginning to the end. You're so involved. And you're so blown away. Like, who is this dude writing this? I know you are, because I am myself. You know I mean? So I know you are. And I just, come on, man. So that's what I feel. And I am very hyped. So I'm a very hyped person. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm energetic. You know, and I'm real. You understand? So what you see is what you get with me, man. As simple as that. And he'd love it or leave it. And I'm paying a run for mail. People tell me I should run for mail, Philly. You know, maybe in five or six years. And I'm 48. I think when I think it's 55, 54, I'll run for mail, Philly, and I'll win. You know, how will I win? I'll definitely win. Absolutely. You know, because I'm real and I'm sincere. And that does matter, I think. You understand me? And I'm a child of the city. I'm a child of Philly, man. Born and raised here. Yeah, I know this city. I took I took the uh, mayor for the first black mayor filled up in Wilson Good. But the first black mayor, man, because I took his daughter to the inauguration ball. Okay, I was her date. And I was in the newspaper. You understand me? You know what I'm saying? And they can say what they want about him. He was still a mayor, he was a good mayor, whatever, man. Shit happens. You know what I'm saying? But I was in the mix of that. You know I'm saying as a kid, at sixteen years old. You know what I'm I know what it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? My future's bright. I mean, because experiences have met, because they have set the path for it to be bright, man, like a yellow brick road, man. Seriously. You know what I'm saying? And I know Tim, man, and the lion, though. There no scarecrow. There no witch. And it's standing on me. You know? Shoot, and me means I win. Period. You know, the God in me. And I really think I win because my mindset is always like, what can I do for you? You know, and I would never put nobody out there. Even though people inbox me on Facebook to help them, man. You see, you know, I'm down on my luck. I'm being humble. You know, can I borrow some money? I ain't rich. You know what I'm saying? But I'm honored that somebody would even, you know, approach me like that. And that says a lot about my vibration. That says a lot about who I am. I mean, so I try to help them if I can. Like, if I can. And then I do. You understand me? I don't care if it's $10, man. If some a grown man to ask you for something, something to humble you, to humble himself in front of you like that, man, that speaks volumes to who you are as a person. Now, just like it speaks volumes to you, you calling me on this interview, man, letting me, with the impatience, letting me talk to you like this, man. Like, seriously, that's awesome. I appreciate it, man. I'm humble. Now, the universe has brought you to me to help me. You understand? You're helping me, bro. I'm not helping you. You know what I'm saying? People are already listening to you already. So, I mean, I'm not helping you. <laughs> now, you're helping me. So I appreciate it, man, straight up. And hopefully, you know, anybody on any sense out there, you know, I can read my work and got some money or got something who can help me. I mean, if I play basketball, it'd be all good, right? Because I rap, it'd be all, if I was a rapper, it'd be all good. If I was a DJ, it'd be all good. So all those dudes getting all this money, and that's good. I ain't hating. They should get that money. You know what I mean? But, man, my writing, man, is on a different level, shit, because straight up. Don't mind me, Luke. I guarantee I'll make him some more. But Tyler Perry, no, he's dope, man. I will never disrespect him. He's dope. Man, that boy hired me, man. Come on, man. He has a billion dollars in three weeks. And that's a fact. And he don't even do horror. Now, I mean, let me write some horror for Tyler Perry, man. Get some black horror out there and see what happens. Are you kidding me? 
it's a joke. And this is what I think about all the time, man. So maybe that's why I'm talking to you now, because I'm like, you know, why, you know I'm not, it's not really my personality to market myself. I just don't, you know, it's not me. I mean, the sense of sense time putting me on you, you know, I was kind of forced into it, and I love it, man. It's important. You know, I'm kind of going to do this. I'm people know who I am, I guess, and through Facebook and whatever, and I got a book out. I'm saying, but you're in Canada, and I love Canada, man. Like, come on, Canada? It's fucking dope, man. Seriously, I'm, you know, I'm at this floor of Canada. I um, um, I stay in uh, West Palm Beach a lot, you know, the last 10 years. You know, and I met some people from Canada while I was in, um, um, I think it was Denny's, you know, so I think we're from Ontario, from Toronto. We're having an overheard the conversation how um, their son was a jet pilot now. And he graduated early, the most powerful. I was like, wow, that was great. You know, I complimented him. And they got up and left. You know, the waitress walked up to him and was like, oh, you know, those people pay for your food. And I was like, wow, that was amazing. Like, yeah, they said you were very nice or whatever. And I was like, oh, yeah, they gave us from Canada. And he said, you know, they thought Americans were, like, you know, in the real city. You know, like, look like, at you, you just made their day. And it blew me away, you know. And the waitress was like, yeah, you are a really nice guy, like, because I was asking her, because when I asked her, you know, what's wrong? I thought of our patients. I was like, what's wrong? Are you okay? She's like, so, you know, I was with my husband four years, and he died not too long ago. I was like, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, and I hugged him, she like that, whatever. She's like, yeah, because, you know, I met him um, at work. And he asked me to come over to the house one day. He was, he was 12 years older than me, and my mom won't let me go. And I snuck out the window and went to his house and never came back, man. You know, she was in 40 years, you know, in that point. And that's why I snuck out the window. They were in for 40 years, dude. Man, this is what I'm talking about, man. You know, her telling me that, confiding that in me, that's amazing, man. You know, and I should credit for that. If somebody could tell me that, it made me feel good, man. Seriously. You know, I could help somebody out. And then she saw my mom in the Denny's, I think, a couple, months le- a couple of weeks later, and asked her to see my mom because we looked alike. And told my mom how great I was and how I helped her. My mom called me on the phone and told me. It made me so proud of myself, man. My mom could be crazy to hear that from her, a stranger. You know what I'm saying? The universe, man, give you what you want, bro. I promise you. You know, that's what I'm saying. If you're like, oh, you think, you think, yeah, I think. You know what I mean? The universe won't give me nothing I don't earn. That's why. You know, people get locked up and killed on this shit for nothing, man, or accidents happening. Things just ran, just ran, just just... Well, why is it happening to me then? Why is it happening to you, DJ Brandon? Huh? Why is you locked up? Huh, why? Like, you ain't robbed nobody? And you ain't doing no fucked up shit? Yeah, thank you. Okay, that's why you're not locked up. You want know, to take responsibility for themselves, man. I'm trying to hear that bullshit. And so you get what you get, and you get what you get. Period. That's it. There's no loopholes to it, man. And I got to say, though, I... I got to say, though, Antar, man, I, I got to say first and foremost, man, thank you so much for just giving us uh, some of your time this afternoon, man. It was an absolute yeah. honor to welcome you on the station. Um, I want to say, man, most definitely be safe out there in Philly, bro. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, and most, I'm looking forward to your newest projects, man. When your new project drops, hit me a message on Facebook, man. We'll get you back on, and we most definitely help promote that book and get you some Canadian sales. Yeah, we face those plans first and foremost, man. I will meet you in reality. Don't even worry about it. Count on that, bro. Hey, man, most definitely, Antar. You have yourself a wonderful day, brother. I appreciate that, man. Be careful out there, man. Tell your wife I say hello, too. I see I see you really love her, and she loves you. That's what's up. Hey, man, you know what I mean? It, ha- happy life, that, happy man. life. That's, you know that's what I mean? The backbone, bro. The backbone hold on to you and got your back like that. I, um, I, saw, the, I saw the post where she was like, Oh, you interviewed something? I forget who you interviewed, but she was like, I had to get up. I heard the voice, and I wanted to see who it was. And I, I was like, damn, I love that shit, yo. Now I'm Batman and Robin, you know what I'm saying? Like, for real, she got your back. Honestly, man, that was actually last yeah. night, bro. I don't know if you're, a, if you're a Smallville fan, but I was on Instagram Live just, uh, tra- you know you know, uh, some celebrities, they invite their fans on to talk? So I sent an, I sent an invite to uh, Michael, Michael Rosenbaum, so he played, like, uh, Lex okay. Luthor in Smallville. Next thing you know, man, he actually brought me on his live. So like, I fucking like ran out to the kitchen. I went, I went fucking fanboy, bro. Like, so my wife heard it and she's like, "Wait, what? You're talking to Lex?" Like, <laughs> right, right. And that's dude. All right, one more thing, man. One more thing I want to say if, if I can. Um. Oh yeah, time video, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I've got to say this. Man. Time video is the shit, yo. See, I want all my movies on Prime. They kill Netflix, man. I mean, 
I got I got some dope shit on Prime Video, and I guarantee you, listeners, you will see my work on Prime Video because I love it. You know what I'm saying? So that's my goal with doing Prime Video sooner or later. You know what I mean? Hey, man, most definitely. I got to say, Antar, have yourself a wonderful day, man. Most definitely be safe, and we most definitely shall talk soon. All right, baby boy. Be safe, man. Count your blessings, man.